Hello, and thank you for joining me in front of my marker board for this special episode of Dash Detailed, which is an explanation of how Private Send works under the hood. Before we begin, let's establish again why privacy on an open ledger would even be an issue. So for an example of a standard non-private transaction on an open ledger, go ahead and take a look at this dash transaction. If it were known that this address belonged to Mo, for example, say he had given it out in an invoice, or even put it in his tip me area on his Twitter profile, something like that, then we would be able to follow that dash on the ledger, both where it had been before Mo got it and where it goes after Mo has it. And the reason for that is the structure of the transaction on the ledger. One known single address sending the entirety of its contents to another address. Compare how that non-private transaction looks with this private send transaction. Now, whereas we may know that this address belonged to Mo, again, because he published it publicly on Twitter or put it in an invoice or something, we now have no idea which of these many output addresses now belong to him. Is it this one, this one, this one? We don't know, and that's the point. If Mo puts his dash through this type of transaction multiple times, one after the other after the other, what we end up with after these mixing rounds, more on that in a moment, is a practical mathematical impossibility of tracing where Mo's coins go anytime in the future of this ledger. So how it works under the hood, here we go. The first thing that happens when you tell your Dash wallet that you would like to private send mix any amount of your coins for future private use is that it breaks them down into denominations that will be uniform with other users on the network. So let's say, for example, you have 10 Dash you would like to mix. Your wallet will now break down this 10 Dash into denominations of 1.1 and even 0.01 Dash. And as you saw in our earlier Block Explorer example, each of these denominations, of course, lives in its own newly created address. Etc, etc. You know how addresses look. Once you have these newly denominated bits of Dash, each sitting in their own address, your wallet now consults its list of masternodes. Your wallet maintains its own list of the network's masternodes, of which, of course, there are several thousands. Your wallet also knows which masternodes you have used for mixing recently, and so will not use those. Something like that. Your wallet contains a randomness generator called OpenSSL RandBytes. Don't ask me what that is, I just work here and it uses that utility to pick from among the remaining masternodes to select one randomly, which you will then submit a mixing request to. There we go. At this point, your wallet sends a mixing request to the masternode it selected. In this request, your wallet states the denomination or denominations it would like to have mixed. Granted, it doesn't send the private key to this dash, just states how much dash it would like to mix, as well as including a small piece of collateral slash fee. More on that later. The masternode then creates what's called a session ID. And this session ID contains the necessary information, basically, hey, I'm looking to mix one dash here, contains the necessary information to broadcast out to the rest of the network so that that information can reside in what's called the mixing queue. The rest of the network, any member on it looking to mix one dash themselves, will rather their wallet will consult this mixing queue to see if there's a match. Changing your wallet here to Mo's for continuity of the story, once the wallets belonging to Mo, Larry, and Curly 
all respond to this mixing cue because they all have one dash they would like to mix, the session is ready to start, as three participants are required. To initiate mixing, the master node then sends each of these three wallets a message that essentially says, ready to mix. At this point, each of the three wallets tells the master node two pieces of information. Their input, that is, where the one dash they would like to mix currently resides. And secondly, their desired output, that is, which of their own newly generated and empty addresses they would like their one dash to end up in once this is all said and done. The master node then checks that all of these requests are legitimate, basically that the inputs are not already spent and that this setup is indeed a spendable transaction. And if it is, the master node combines all of this data into a ready to send transaction that is one dash one dash and one dash ending up in new addresses one dash one dash and one dash but the master node doesn't send this transaction out to the network as a real thing just yet why because the wallets need to check that the master node has done this correctly and is behaving honestly so the master node sends this transaction just to those three wallets, and those three wallets check for two things. One, that the output dash equals the input dash, meaning the master node isn't trying to steal some of the dash for itself. One dash, one dash, one dash, yes. Outputs equal inputs, good there. And the second thing that the wallets check for is that their input and output that they originally submitted, that is their address where their one dash currently resides and where they'd like it to reside, they make sure that those addresses are accurate in this transaction as well. Again, to make sure that the master node isn't trying to send some dash to itself in a sneaky way. Mo will see that his input and output are correct, check, though he doesn't know which addresses belong to which of his mixing partners. Again, that's the point. Larry's wallet will see that his submitted input and output are both correctly recorded in this transaction. And Curly's wallet will see the same. Once verifying that this transaction does indeed look correct, Moe's, Larry's, and Curly's wallets will each sign it with their private key, which is totally normal and how cryptocurrency transactions work in general, but this is a slightly different special signature. You like those signatures? <laughs> so what these signatures say above and beyond what a private key signature usually says in a cryptocurrency transaction is that it is all right to send this transaction regardless of whomever else signs it. Because of course, Mo doesn't know Larry's private keys, Larry doesn't know Curly's private keys, and etc. So they need to sign this transaction, they need to say it's okay, in a way that allows the other two to sign it without any of them needing to know each other's private keys. If Moe's, Larry's, and Curly's signatures all check out, the master node now broadcasts this transaction to the rest of the network for real. It will now get processed like any other regular Dash transaction on the ledger. And bear in mind that if at any point before broadcasting it, the master node attempted to alter the contents of the transaction, again, in any way to be dishonest, to attempt to send any number of Dash to a place where it was not authorized to go, the signatures of the participant wallets will be invalid, and so the transaction will not go through. After the master node sends the broadcast, Mo, Larry, and Curly will see their dash is in pending. It's in their wallet's pending area, which is where any and all incoming dash go while they're awaiting a confirmation. And of course, in this way, none of these participants ever had to revoke their private keys at any point along the process of mixing. The wallet participants have now created for each of themselves an uncertainty set of 
three addresses. Where did Moe's coins end up? We don't know. Where did Larry's? Where did Curly's? We're not sure. And because this process can be repeated up to eight times, you can begin to get an idea of the size of the uncertainty set that it creates. If this sounds like a less than perfectly intuitive process to you, don't worry, it is, which is why evolution is being designed to make this pretty much obscured away. That is, one ought to be able to simply put any amount of Dash into one's private account and all of the rest of it just happens. But in case you're the kind of person who likes to know how things work under the hood, there is Dash Private Send. And now what about that collateral slash fee I mentioned earlier that always gets submitted with denominations to be mixed? It's almost always returned by the masternode to the original submitting wallet, though roughly one out of every 10 times it's kept as a way to prevent abuse to the system. Come back next week, same time, same place, Wednesdays at 12 noon Eastern time. See you then.